Welcome to Twin Peaks Radio, a pilot episode of a sort. For the record, before you get into this, most episodes will not be video, will not be on YouTube, will not be free. I've been doing a lot of podcasts over the last few years, and the Twin Peaks one is actually going to be behind my Patreon wall. Just finished this, reading this the other night. like some stuff from it. A wise man once told me that a mystery is the most essential ingredient of life for the following reason. Mystery creates wonder, which leads to curiosity, which in turn provides the ground for our desire to understand who and what we truly are. Nice. Moving forward in time, it is important that we learn to distinguish between mysteries and secrets. Mysteries precede humankind, envelop us, and draw us forward into exploration and wonder. Secrets are the work of mankind. Covert and often insidious way to gather, withhold, or impose power. We all know what we know. Most fear or ignore what they don't, but if you seek the truth, you must approach the unknown. Lean into it. Wait for it to speak to you. Are you willing to pass that threshold? A real mystery can't be solved. Not completely. It's always just out of reach, like a light around the corner. You might catch a glimpse of what it reveals, feel its warmth, but you can't know the heart of it. Not really. That's what gives it value. It can't be cracked. It's bigger than you and me, bigger than everything we know. I don't intend to suggest that I understand anything more about the show or the purposes of its creators more than you. I don't want to be the end-all, be-all definitive answer. In fact, my approach primarily is going to be to approach it one piece at a time. I watched season one when it was on in the first place. I was a teenager, adolescent, loved it, was fascinated by it. Uh, when season two came around and it was moved to, what, Saturday? We didn't watch it as much. It got inconsistent and I lost track of it. I heard about what was going on. Bob and Leland and all that stuff. Spoilers. Never saw the end of the season. Until. Sometime a few years later. It was maybe when it was on Bravo. I don't remember what station. I rewatched all of it. I was like, that was cool. And I was really into X-Files in the 90s. So it was interesting to see this other thing with similar themes and weirdness. Not themes, but weirdness. And then when season three came around, I wasn't one of these people obsessed with Twin Peaks. I was like, oh, I'm curious. And I watched it and kind of got annoyed with the things that now I appreciate a lot about, like making us wait for things. And when episode eight came around and I was, I was done. But earlier this year, I watched from beginning to end. One, two, Firewalk with me, three read The Secret Diary of Laura Palmer, got really into it, and was like, I'm in. And then just this summer now, I've got my wife to watch along with it, so I'm watching the show again from beginning to end. we actually taking a break after Firewalk with me before we get to season three. Not 25 years, of course, or whatever. And meanwhile, I was reading Secret History of Twin Peaks. I have a copy of the final dossier, but I haven't read it yet. I have a copy of uh, the Wrapped in Plastic collection. I forget what it's called, Essential Wrapped in Plastic or something like that. And a few other things. I got a PDF I made of the guide to the town that they put out back when the series was on. Interesting stuff in there, especially when you connect it to this. That's my thing, though. This is a big part. Because I was into X-Files because of all the alien stuff and weird conspiracy things. And I really like that angle of the Secret History Twin Peaks book. A lot of people, I think, that have seen videos from approach this as a David Lynch work and all their comparisons to similar things in Eraserhead and Mulholland Drive and Inland Empire and all these different, you know, things connect. He uses the same visuals and ideas a lot. That's fair. I think I want to at least start without that. So, coming soon. I'm going to try to go sort of episode by episode, but when I get to a tangent that I need to get onto a tangent about, I'll let it have its own episode. Most of the episodes will be audio only. Some, maybe every fifth one, every tenth one, I don't know, I haven't figured out how often they're going to actually happen, will be available on a regular podcatcher. Some will be here on YouTube when I know I need a visual component. Most of them will be behind Patreon. So I gotta support all my shows, you know. I do Movies by Minutes podcast. One of them, Annihilation Minute, has been going once a week for 
two and a half years ish and it ends next week well as of me recording this i don't know how fast i'll put this episode up it ends beginning of august has been going since february of 2019 that is looking at the movie annihilation one minute at a time and i've done other shows some of that you can go to lemmingdrops.com to see links to all that stuff um a link to lemmingdrops.com should be in the description so we can remember and a link to my patreon of course coming up about the same time i'm doing this show i will be doing three movies by minute shows well no sort of four but i'll talk about the three because they're important they're sort of as existential trilogy maybe by the time this is uh, up on youtube my trailer will also be available for that where i'm covering ex machina groundhog day and eternal sunshine of the spotless mind each episode, each with one episode a week, covering one minute of the movie. That will be sometimes with my wife, sometimes with a guest. This one is going to be more random. It's more like when I think of something that needs an episode, it'll have an episode. Or it'll be at least one episode a week. It's the goal. And sometimes more. For example, saving this for episode one. Past this one. You know, episode one's the one after the pilot, just like Twin Peaks. I just got this on eBay. This is the week it came out. Thing I want to do. Weird questions I've got to cover for other episodes later. Yes, I will eventually talk about Judy. I'm not going to talk about Judy. In fact, we're not going to talk about Judy at all. Gordon? A couple realizations I had recently. Bob wasn't putting letters under people's nails. Leland was. Some subconscious effort to reveal what was going on. I also found an interesting reference yesterday. Robertson panel. Panel on aliens. Found that one looking up some stuff related to things referenced in secret history. So I thought that was interesting. The nail thing was the realization I had. And you couldn't put them in order. Couldn't be R-O-B-E because that would have been too obvious. It had to be some weird kink. So Bob would let it happen. But also, how long were Bob and Mike killing together? And when. This comes down to that episode 8 part. The nuclear explosion. Did that create the Lodge characters? No. They existed before. That's part of the secret history. It's part of even the show. Things in the woods. There's a sort of evil out there. Something very, very strange in these old woods. Call it what you want. Uh, a darkness, a presence takes many forms but it's been out there for as long as anyone can remember so who else has leland killed bob's been in him since he was a kid but on to mike for my second thing i realized people always mention the formica table this is the formica table They don't talk about why the arm says it for Mike, a table. They're talking about the ring. They're talking about Mike's goal. Mike, what's a table for? Why is it for Mike? What does it have to do with the ring? And I think there's a couple uses for tables. Eating, Garmin Bosia, obviously. The other thing for tables, I think of the big table from uh, Narnia, actually. sacrifice place what if the ring isn't protection what if it's marking for sacrifice we'll see